Hey YouTube, so welcome to Mumbai. Hope you guys are ready for another travel guide review. Those of you guys who follow my channel, you know the gist by now. First part, gay travel information. Second part, general opinions, viewpoints, things I think are worth seeing or not seeing. And third part, if there is a third part, which there isn't, to Mumbai. That's why I usually tell stories if I have any fun stories to tell, but I don't, so there won't be a third part. Also, this is probably just going to be, oops, sorry, um, this is probably just going to be a little mini review because there's not really that much more to tell you guys about Mumbai that I didn't already tell you guys about Delhi. I mean, I think for so many parts of the world, there there's really no need to have a gay travel guide because of the fact that when being gay is not in any way, shape, or form socially accepted, then people... Okay, sorry. I'm not trying to make this a porno. Um, yeah, I know I lost my train of thought. So if, when there's generally no gay rights or anything like that, there's generally it always comes down to the same things. I mean, there's cruising and there's, you know, there used to be CD bars and now for the most part everything's online. So same thing in Mumbai. I mean, is there an actual gay, an actual, you know, gay part of town? No. Um... Is there any official gay clubs? No. Is so if, if there's gay parties that are sponsored or created or I don't know, I can't think of the right word right now, that if you click yourself into other gay people, they will know. It's basically like a house party that gay people will go to. I have never been to one of these in any country I've been to, and this is something that occurs in other, country, in other countries. So I really don't know what happens at these kind of parties. I don't know if this is really then a party and people come and they drink and they eat chips and watch movies, or if by party they mean it turns basically into a big old orgy or something. And I wouldn't put it past gay people because... You know, that's kind of how we act everywhere else, so why is that not how we should act at gay parties? But again, that's just me being maybe a little bit jaded. I can't really substantiate that. In terms of cruising, um, I was told that where Gateway to India is, there, that right around there, there's like along the waterfront, that used to be a very big cruisy area, um, but with now most people doing everything online, that has kind of lost some of its, you know, I don't know, appeal, or I guess nobody really does that anymore, nobody goes there anymore. Um, that's all I really have in terms of information. I mean, maybe there's some other gay cruising areas that other people know about. Then they can maybe add it down on the bottom in the... Oh, gosh. Um, in the comments. Man, I'm sorry. I've had a long day. <coughs> but other than that, everything's, everything's online. I mean, especially... I think in, especially in countries where being gay is so taboo, you're definitely going to have everything be online because that's really the only outlet people have. I mean, why, why would you take the chance of going to a club or go cruising where, you know, you might get harassed or mistreated or the police chasing after you or God knows what if you could just as easily sit at home and, um, you know chill out and just do everything online. Oh, the, the only other thing that I did see and notice myself, and I'm sorry, I don't have the actual train station, but it's the train station before Car, Car Road. There's a train station that has a big trans 
transvestite, transsexual, like I can't I can't judge if they're transvestite or transsexuals. Um, scene. I was told that it's predominantly just for prostitution. And, and actually, I know some Mumbai. There's a lot of transsexuals, transvestites. I, I don't I don't know if they're, what they are. Um, so there's a big big scene here. And I can't again substantiate this, but from what I was told is I, I, I I'm not I don't really understand. This is probably something I don't want to get into because I already had problems with people saying that I'm not as supportive of the trans community as I should be. But I can't really I don't really understand who goes to trans prostitutes if it's gay men or straight men but from what I was told is it's straight married men because Indian women and even Indian female prostitutes have a lot of things that they refuse to do and the trans sexual transvestite prostitutes will basically do anything so a lot of straight men go to them for that yeah I don't know, maybe this will just be a mini review. I guess I, I'm not really able to give you guys all that much information. So unless maybe somebody else, again, some Indian viewer can co leave comments or something. That'd be cool. Um, so part two. So I feel a little bit like I'm, I'm going to betray the Indian people by saying that I like Mumbai a lot better than Delhi. Daily, Delhi. So I haven't figured that out. Um, it's weird because all the Indian people I met in Delhi were like, oh, I don't like Mumbai. Oh, I don't like Mumbai. So, and, and because the largest slum in Asia is in Mumbai, I already kind of was like, oh God, I'm not going to like Mumbai. And it's the, and it's the largest city by population. And there's everything that I would have thought would make me not like it is actually here. And then I came here and I was actually surprised. I actually like it a lot more. Now, having said that, I think a lot of that has to do, and this is where I say, I feel like it's a little bit of a betrayal of the Indian people is because it has a more Western feel. It, at least in the southern part, um, downtown. I call it downtown. I don't think that's what they actually call it, but I'll call it downtown. I'm actually staying in the northern part near the airport, but um, the southern part, you could, you could just tell that the British, while this was still like a British colony, um, they just seemed to invest a lot more time, energy, and money into Mumbai than they did Delhi. Because there's just much more infrastructure in terms of streets. There's a lot of more westernized buildings, which I generally find personally prettier because they're just... I, I can't really say to the Indian style. I don't know, maybe it's just because the Indian people didn't have enough money to really build housing the way they wished but from what what i identify as indian building style is not pretty so that part to me at least so and like i say in a way it feels like a betrayal because what i like more about mumbai is the fact that it's more westernized so which almost seems a little bit like yeah a betrayal <laughs> i also have to say i think it is a lot cleaner um I don't know if I was just in all the wrong parts of Delhi and all the right parts of Mumbai, but it definitely seems a lot cleaner to me here than it did there. So, and you guys know that I'm somebody who is kind of picky about cleanliness, even though I said I wasn't going to bitch about it, because um, I have been to other countries now that are very, that have the same issues. Um... But I'm going to add it to my likes. Oh, ooh, so I was supposed to say my likes and my dislikes. And I already went ahead and started. So, oh, and the absolute highlight 
of my trip so far has been in Mumbai, and that's the Elephant, Elephanta, Elephanta, Elephanta Caves. Elephant, Elephant, how would you say that in English? Elephant, Elephant, Elephant A. <laughs> Ele anyway, those caves, that the, especially the first one to me was amazing. It was like that, I kind of had this moment where I was like, okay, this, finally, this is the reason I came to India, because these are the, this is what I want to see. These are the kind of things that I'm interested in. Um, like, I didn't have that feeling at the Taj Mahal or a lot of the things in the north because I'm kind of like, okay, I'm in India and they're in India, but everything was built by the Persians. I mean, like, I didn't never got the feeling like I, I've experienced Indian culture. So these caves to me were like the first thing where I really was like, wow, this is like really shows Indian craftsmanship and history and is incredibly beautiful. So... That is like definitely the number one thing, the only thing to me worth seeing in Mumbai. <laughs> I really wanted to do a Bollywood tour, um, but there's no real official tours from the looks of it. I looked online, there's some given, but they're all really sketchy, and I just didn't feel like investing in that. But I did go see a Bollywood movie. I guess I could make, well, I could make that part three because that was that was kind of funny. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm just having in general a very hard time bringing across India to you guys because to me India is such a country of oppositions in a weird way for me in a weird way for me for a Westerner in a weird way that don't, that don't make sense to me. Um, you know, on the one hand, you have this, the Indians have this whole belief where everything is sacred, everything is holy, but at the same time, you know, you know, I mean, like, you know, everything's sacred, people and plants and buildings and animals, you know, especially animals are very sacred in India. But then at the same time, you see like starving dogs and cows laying on the street, you see them throwing garbage everywhere. Um, so again, that to me is like a total, you know, opposite of opposition, opposition, you know, in a way that doesn't make sense to me. Then at the same time, there's also this where it's all about, you know, one of the, I think there's four, I think if, I forget if there's four or five main tasks for Hindus and I know one of them for sure, though, is about being polite and being respectful to other human beings. So in one way, and then in one way, you have people who are so helpful and they're so respectful and they're so friendly. You know, I've had people like walk me to the places I need to go and, you know, literally they put me into the train I need to go and help me get off the train. And in one way, there's 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 such a high level of like being polite and friendly. And then on the other hand, if if you get on their way when you're crossing the street, even if you're on the right, they will run you over in cold blood. They do not care. They will push and shove you when it's time to get off or on the train. They don't care. Like, so it's just, it's just this weird, again, like a weird opposition where I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me in one way being this whole, you know, um, and the same thing with gay. There's this huge opposition in, in India with like, the because in one way, being gay is frowned upon and being gay is wrong and it's illegal. But then on the same turn, there's so many gay men. There's so many gay men. And there's so many straight men who sleep with men. And there's so many transvestites. And they're, they're you know, male to male interaction is so accepted. And from what I've been told, even before you're married, having encounters with other men isn't even necessarily considered that bad, I mean, that bad, you know? So again, it's like this whole thing of opposition. So it's like, it's very hard for me to, you know, wrap India into one thing and just say like or dislike because there's, there's things I like and there's things, oh, one of the things I totally forgot to mention, and I don't know if I forgot to mention this in my Delhi video, one of the things I love about cities in India is that it seems like you can tell there's this ongoing battle with the jungle trying to retake that land that that is a city and because I'm like a big plant and animal lover I love how it's almost like 
I don't know how it is in the south. I'm going to the south next. But at least in the north, all the cities are so intertwined with jungle and city. And I just feel like, oh, if they... That's, I think, the probably what bothers me more here about the amount of garbage there is than that bothered me in Egypt. Because, let's be fair, Egypt, it's not really pretty country-wise. I mean, it's a desert. It's, it's not, it's just not, for me, it's not like, oh my god, what a beautiful country if there was no people here. But India would be so amazingly beautiful if there was more interest by the Indian people to keep it nice. And I just imagine this city clean and then, and then having that dynamic of like jungle and animal and people and everything so intertwined. I think it would be so amazingly beautiful. And that's Delhi and Mumbai. So, yeah. But anyway, okay, so the goods, what were the goods? It's cleaner. Um, I think it's prettier. I guess it's not like, I guess it's a comparative. It's, it's, it's cleaner. That's, that's definitely a positive. I think the downtown area, as far as there is such, is fairly clean. I, I kind of like that run down, um, feeling of like old buildings. I like that a lot in Cuba. Like I find that has like some kind of romantic feeling to it. So I find that very pretty. So that's another positive for me. And of course, the Elephant, Elephanta Islands were just amazing to me. The negative, it's dirty. It's, it's cleaner, but it's still dirty. Um, the air quality, I feel like here, is really bad. Really bad. I was like coughing and wheezing the whole time I was here. Um... And the worst part of Mumbai, which is the only, like, the one thing where I was kind of like, maybe I do like Delhi better, is I don't, like, Mumbai is horribly, horribly hard to get around. Like, it, it's, like, the connection system here is horrible. It's, it's predominantly, like, because it's not that broad. It's, not, it, it's almost like Manhattan. It's, like, it's shaped, like, almost like Manhattan, actually. Um, so it's not very wide, but it's very long. And the only way to get from the north to the south is via these trains. And the trains are not good. <laughs> They're not good. And there's a metro, but it's like, it's, just, it's almost like who thought of this metro system? Like, it's just totally willy-nilly. Like, there's a metro in the very north that goes east-west, but it doesn't even go through the whole span of east-west. It's kind of like, it starts here and ends here. So it's totally impractical. And then there's another one that's like in the middle somewhere. And again, it just kind of ends and stops. It ends and stops. Begins and stops in the middle of nowhere again. So it has like no real purpose again. So I, I don't know. I'm really... The way of getting around in, in Mumbai, I think, is terrible, terrible, terrible. Like that is something... If they had a really good metro system here, it'd be... And actually, you know, this, this is something that makes me so sad because honestly, there's parts of the downtown area where I really was like, man, if 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 people tried, this could be competition to Manhattan. Because downtown Mumbai, to me, has a very, very Soho feeling. For those of you guys who have been to New York City. It's, it's very, like, it's rustic, and, it's, and it has all this potential for, like, little outside cafes, and there's a lot of these really cute old buildings. If they would just figure out a way to get people to want that. And, of course, then maybe work on a better metro system. So that's my bads. Is there anything else that's bad? No. Oh, and, and this is not, this is not a specific, this is just a FYI, welcome to India kind of thing. An overall negative thing that I find in the gay community in India is, and I'm, I know I'm going to get people like really getting upset about me saying this because maybe it's 
it's it's a kind of a cringe worthy topic that I think a lot of people it's a cringe worthy topic. And that is that in Indians are very racist. And at the same time they're very caught up in white whiteness. So and then, and I'm not saying, like, I know I'm going to have, like, Indian viewers that are going to watch this and be like, hey, you're an asshole, and blah, that's not true. But I'm sorry. Like, if you, if you, I was, oh, my God, India, by the way, is killing me. I had, a, first I had a horrible cold last week. Then I think I spoke too soon in my other video where I was like, look, one thing I haven't had is that bad stomach and going to the bathroom problem that everybody else always complains about. Well, guess what? <laughs> I finally had that too, to the point where I had like two days where I really didn't even want to leave my hotel because I had to go to the bathroom every three seconds. Anyway, so there was a day where I, all I was doing was really was watching TV. And if you watch commercials in India that are for cosmetics, they always start off the commercial with somebody looking brown. And then they use this cosmetic, and it doesn't even matter what it is. It could be a cream, it could be a face wash, it could be fucking a tampon. You know, like, shove this tampon in your cooch and you'll become white. You know, and the people always automatically turn, and then at the end of the commercial, the people turn whitish or lighter skinned. And... And it's so bad in India that I've actually had, this is my opinion, my opinion people, okay, nobody else has to agree, this is my opinion. I've had men here approach me that in my opinion are actually, um, was it out, like beyond, out of my reach? Out of my, what is that word? Beyond my reach? Now I can't even think what I'm trying to say. You know, like they're, 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 I don't want to say better than me because I don't like that word, but like, oh gosh, come on, think brain. Better, what is that word? More upscale. I just had that word. Well, you guys know what I mean. Basically, like, they are guys that, you know, they were, they were young and they were very attractive and they had really nice bodies and... Um, out of my league. Ah, that's the word I was looking for. Like, I actually had guys that, in my opinion, were completely out of my league in terms of, you know, youth and attractiveness and having nice body shapes. And they literally begging, and I know this sounds horrible, but I had guys here begging for me to go, to go out with them or have sex with them or something like that. And it's just because of the fact that I'm white. And there's this overall just idea that white is better and I think it's one of those things that people don't want to say and I mean it's even cringeworthy for me to say it but it really I'm sorry but that's and it's something I personally struggle with especially like as a German I don't know if you guys know this but we Germans generally like the dark <laughs> like one of the big things that people will say is like Germans love black men and we love like Mediterranean men, we love Arabs, like we love everything that's like dark, 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 dark. Like that to us is what's sexy. So it's very odd to me coming to a culture that so worships almost the idea of whiteness. Um, and I think that's very sad. I think it shows a lot of how much damage the British Empire at the time really left so many generations after India already is now independent has nothing to do with that anymore so many generations later already it's still ingrained in them that white is better than dark or black or whatever and the reason I was thinking about this is because I was watching that Bollywood movie too and all of the main actors all of the important actors were very fair skinned and all the bad guys and all like the big enemies those were like dark skinned people and i don't know it's made it it's kind of for me i think it's a little bit sad and it's, it, and, it's, and having talked to gay people here it's also for me i mean i'm not 
I'm honestly not feeling very sexual anyway these days, but I can tell you right now, meeting an Indian man and his basic interest in wanting to date me or go out with me or have sex with me, whatever the case might be, is because I'm white. Sorry, but that does not get you any points with me. Like, that does not make me go, ooh, well, just under the radar. You know, that makes me kind of go, mm, well, now I'm really not interested in you. Because if the only part of me that's interesting to you is the fact that I'm Caucasian, then that, you know. So that's like a big negative for me in terms of, or a big negative. I, and I really don't understand it because, like I said, like especially like some of the really dark Indian guys here, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's weird to me that skin color would be such a hang up. Yeah. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this mini review that actually ended up being what is it, 25 minutes. Hopefully, you guys are all. Well, Om Shanti. <laughs> oh no, that's or Namaste. Namaste. We we're supposed to say yeah, Namaste. Take care of yourselves and yeah. See y'all soon. seen in India so far. Well, this is downtown Mumbai. As far as I don't even think they have an actual downtown. As far as their terminology.